Hello. In this tutorial for Code.org App Lab, we're going to learn how to make a character or an object glide towards a mouse click. This can be useful for a variety of games or programs. For instance, you might want to have a character collect some objects, or you might want to have a character move through a maze, or you might want to have a character avoid enemies. It is recommended that you make your video window as large as possible to better see the code. This piece of artwork was purchased from Game Dev Market, which is a website. Also, sometimes Humble Bundle teams up with Game Dev Market, where you can purchase a collection of assets for a low price. For information on how to get game artwork for free, please click on the video link in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Now in this case, I've already set up my environment. I've named my main screen, screen underscore main, and I've named my character image underscore girl. For information on how to set up your code.org app, please click on the video in the upper right-hand corner of the screen on that topic. So, the first thing we need to do is create what's called some global variables. And these are called global variables because they're declared with the var command outside of any functions. That means they're accessible to all functions in the program. So I'm going to say var x target, and this is going to be eventually the location of the x-axis of where we clicked. So I'll just make a comment here. By the way, two slashes tells the computer to ignore everything after that, so it's just a note for other programmers. So we'll say keeps track of target coordinate on x-axis. Then we'll do the same thing, var y target, and then we'll just copy and paste this. Now we haven't initialized these with a value yet, so we're going to need to give them a value before we use them, but we'll do that later on. Next, we're going to create a var is started, and we're going to initialize it with the value false. And once we start it, we're going to change this to true, and we'll see how this is useful later. Next thing we need to do is we need to create an event listener for whenever we click on a portion of this screen. So we're going to go to the toolbox. We could type it out, but it's easier to drag and drop. We're going to go to the toolbox, we're going to go to UI controls, and we're going to drag an on event here. So we've got our event listener. Let's close that out. So we've got to change a few things. So the ID of the object we want is screen underscore main. So this will be activated whenever we click on screen main. Now we also want to put a parameter in here, event. And this variable here is going to be useful for retrieving the x and y value of where we clicked. Now this is called an anonymous function because it doesn't have a name, but it'll run whenever this event listener is activated. Okay, so now we have to get some calculations. We got to know the, the height of the image, and we also got to know the width. So I'm going to declare var girl height, and I'm going to use a method called get property, get property, then the arguments for get property we're going to use image underscore girl, because that's the name of this image, then comma, comma should be outside the quotation marks, and the property we want is the height property. Now we've got to do the same thing with width. We'll say var girl width equals get property, again from the image underscore girl, and then we'll have a comma. The property we want is the image's width. We'll end it with a semicolon. We'll see how we're going to use these two variables in our calculations later on. Next thing we got to do is we got to get the value that we clicked on, or the value for the x and y that we clicked on, and we got to store them in these global variables here. So we don't have to declare var again because we're just updating the values. We only declare var when we're creating the variables. So we're going to say x target equals event, because events are parameter dot x, which is going to see x axis we clicked on, and then we're going to say minus. Now when we click on this, it's going to get us the x and y axis, and we're going to move our character there. However, when we move our character, it's going to move this upper left hand corner there, and we really want to move the center of the object there. So we're going to subtract half of the character's width from the x and half of the character's height from the y. So we'll say minus girl 
width divide by 2. Then we'll say y target. So we're going to give a value to this global variable y target. And we'll set it equal to event.y minus girl height divide by 2. Finally, we're going to call another function that we haven't written, and that's the start function. Because if we haven't started yet, we want it to start a loop that's going to move the character slowly towards whatever point we clicked on. Now we're going to write the start function. So we'll go down here, we'll say function start, open close parentheses, then we'll open our squiggly bracket. Now we need to check, has it already been started? So we're going to say if not is started. And then we'll open and close our squiggly brackets here. Now, not is started is equivalent to saying is started equals false. This is just a little more simple way of writing it. So if it hasn't been started, we want to do a few things. First, we want to set is started equals true. That way, we won't start it multiple times. Next, we want to start running a timed loop. So I'm, again, going to go to the toolbox here. I'm going to go to the control, and then I'm going to grab a timed loop. Now, we could type this out. It's just a little easier to drag and drop. We'll close out the toolbox. Now, I want this to run every 50 milliseconds, which is 20 times a second. And it creates us another anonymous function that will run every 50 milliseconds. And every 50 milliseconds, we want to call the new function move. And we're going to write this next. So it's going to call the move function 20 times per second. So let's go outside the start function, and let's start writing the move function. We'll declare function move, open close parentheses, then squiggly brackets. we move down a little bit so we can see the closed squiggly brackets. Now we need to calculate where the girl image is right now. So we're going to say ver girl x. By the way, here we're declaring a variable inside a function. This is called a local variable. And as a local variable is created every time we run the move function, and it's destroyed every time the move function finishes. Also, as a local variable, it can only be accessed inside the move function. We're going to set it equal to get x position image underscore girl. We're going to do the same thing with y. We're going to say ver girl y equals get y position, and again, image underscore girl. And we'll end with a semicolon. Now we need to calculate how far the girl's going to move. So we're going to calculate ver x difference. So the x difference is going to be the difference between the current location of the image and the target location where it's going. So we're going to set that equal to math.abs. And we're using this absolute value function because we want to know how far the character is moving, not in what direction it's moving. So we're going to say girl x minus x target. And end with a semicolon. Then ver y difference equals math.abs girl y minus y target. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to see if the girl image needs to move far enough to be worth moving it. Because if it's pretty close, we run the risk of having it move a little too far in one direction, then it's got to correct back the other direction, and it kind of bounces back and forth. So we're going to make sure if the girl doesn't have to move two pic more than two pixels, we're just not going to do anything. Because that's not really noticeable anyway. So we're going to say if y difference is greater than 2, or x difference is greater than 2, then that's the circumstance where we're actually going to move the character. So then we're going to open and close our squiggly brackets, and then we're actually going to do the move work here. So next we need to calculate the speed. So we're going to create a var x speed, and then a var y speed. Now we're going to check if the girl needs to move farther on the x-axis or the y-axis. And this is important because how far the character needs to move on the x or y-axis is going to determine how fast it's moving on each axis. 
if it's moving to a point that's equally distant on x and y, it's going to move at a constant speed on the x and y. However, if it's going to be moving like much farther on the y than on the x here, we need it to move farther on the y than on the x for each movement, so that way it gets to its location on the x and the y at the same time. So we're going to say if x difference is greater than y difference. So this means it's going to move further on the x than it is on the y. And we're going to set x speed to 4. And then we're going to set y speed equal to 4 times y difference divided by x difference. Now on the other hand, if it's moving farther on the y than on the x, we're going to have an else. In this case, we're going to set x speed equal to 4 times the quantity of x difference divided by y difference. And we'll set y speed equal to 4. This is how many pixels it's going to move each time the move function is called. Now we need to actually update the value of the girl x and girl y based on the speed. We're either going to add or subtract x and y speed depending on which direction the girl has to move. On a computer, the corner is coordinates 0, 0. And the x increases as we go to the right, and the y increases as we go down. And the way the y increases as we go down is opposite what we expect in math. So let's go down here. And we're going to check, is girl x, which is the girl's current location, less than x target? And if girl x is less than x target, that means the girl's going to have to move to the right, which means we need to increase the x value. So we'll make our squiggly brackets. And then we'll set girl x equals girl x. So girl x is going to equal the current value of girl x plus x speed. Now on the other hand, if the girl x is greater than the x target, that means it's going to have to move to the left, which means we're going to have to decrease the value of girl x. So we're going to say else. Then we'll say girl x equals girl x minus x speed. So we're going to do the same calculation for y. So we'll say if girl y is less than y target, open our squiggly brackets, so that means the girl y needs to move down. So we're going to say girl y equals girl y plus y speed. Then we'll do our else. In this case, the girl needs to move up. So we're going to say girl y equals girl y minus y speed. Now this doesn't actually change the location of the girl image. This just creates a number and we can actually move it to whatever number this variable is holding. So now we're going to use a function set position open parentheses. So what object do we want to set the position of? Image underscore girl and we want to set it to girl x comma girl y. We'll have a semicolon and now we're ready to run the program. So let's hit run. We're going to click on a location and see the girl is moving to that location. So I'd be interested to hear what kind of programs could you use this for? Or if you're working on any other projects, please share this in the comments. There are several other tutorials you might find useful. I'll put the links to the videos here. A couple are how to create specific kinds of video games, and another is how to make an image move to a random location. So you could combine that tutorial with this one, and you could perhaps have one character chasing another character, and the second character is moving in random directions.